Stories here at home. This is the National News Broadcast. A pleasant evening. I'm Dilanjali Ananda. A very good evening indeed. I'm Charitam Nikrarachi. And now let's move on to the headlines for tonight's news. Decision on the GCE ordinary level examination within 10 days. A monitoring mechanism to ensure the home quarantining process conducted efficiently. The total COVID-19 recoveries in the country increased up to 15,816. Ford's authority says operations of its terminals back to normalcy. Ministry of Technology under the purview of the President. A new cabinet minister swears in. On to those and other stories in detail now and starting off with local stories. Minister Professor G.L. Peters says that a decision will be reached on the conducting of the GCE ordinary level examination in the ordinary level classes in the Western Province and isolated police divisions cannot be commenced within the next 10 days. He made these remarks at a media briefing held at the Government Information Department today. Minister Kehle Ramukwal also present at the media briefing. I see it. Minister Professor GLP said that they will give to consider whether it is appropriate to postpone the GC audit level examination if the ordinary level classes in the Western Province and isolated police divisions cannot be commenced within the next 10 days or during the first week of December. He said that a decision has to be reached if the prevailing situation continues to prevail in the country, compelling the schools to remain closed. He added that decisions have to be reached considering the disparities which could occur during under school conditions. The Minister of Health says that a total of 15,816 COVID-19 recoveries were recorded in the country at present. 369 fully recovered patients have left the hospitals today. The percentage of COVID-19 recoveries in the country has increased up to 72.51. In other news, Sri Lanka Port Authority says all operations of its terminals have returned to normalcy. Operations of several terminals of the Colombo port were impacted due to COVID-19 pandemic. Steps have been taken to increase the efficiency of the Colombo port's operations by combining several container short storages. The aim of this program is to update all terminals as well as all to ensure the well-being of the persons who are involved in the operations of the port. All operations will be carried out in accordance to health guidelines. Sri Lanka Ports Authority has indicated that the agency is committed in providing relevant services to all stakeholders. Internet facilities have been provided for those who are involved in the goods clearance processes. Any issues pertaining to clearance process can be informed via 071 853-1859 or 071-8688-361 hotlines. And meanwhile, the new construction of a new bridge across Rajaguri and Aval canals was commenced today. The aim of this project is to reduce the vehicular traffic congestion by connecting Athalkote, Mirihan Road with Rajagiri and Aval. The foundation stone for the new bridge was laid at Ankampitiya Road. It was held with the participation of Ministers Johnston Fernando and Dinesh Gunavardhana. The new bridge, which begins from Ankampitiya Road, will connect Navala, Ninth Lane and School Lane. The bridge will be constructed at a cost of 1,700 million rupees. The construction of 700-meter long bridge will be carried out through State Development and Construction Corporation. This is a project initiated under the Rural Roads and Other Infrastructure Facilities State Ministry. And here's the local update of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Ministry of Health says that a total of 15,816 COVID-19 recoveries were recorded in the country at present. 369 fully recovered patients have left the hospitals today. The percentage of COVID-19 recoveries in the country has increased up to 72.51. 5,899 infected patients are receiving treatments at present. The number of fully recovered patients discharged from hospitals in the first 26 days of this month amounted to 11,422. 
A batch of 25 patients at COVID-19 treatment centers in Ponani and Balikanda left the centers following their complete recovery from the disease. The recovered patients have been identified as residents from Colombo, Polonnaruwa, Anuradhapura, Monaragala and Hambantut areas. A total of 502 COVID-19 patients were detected from the country yesterday. Meanwhile, 485 fully recovered patients have left the hospitals yesterday. 262 patients were detected from Colombo district, 90 patients were detected from Gampa district, while 46 patients were detected from Kalutra district. A total of 342 COVID-19 patients were detected from the country today. The patients have been identified as close contacts of the Paliaguda COVID-19 cluster. Another 369 recoveries were recorded today. A total of 12,105 PCR tests were conducted yesterday. Accordingly, more than 777,610 PCR tests have been conducted in the country at present. Another 42 police officers have been infected with the COVID-19 yesterday. Accordingly, 1,123 police officers have tested positive for COVID-19 in the country at present. A 100-bed quarantine centre has been established at Mahara Presidents College in Kadavata to quarantine police officials recently. The Kadavata Traders Association has contributed towards the establishment of the new quarantine centre. Five persons belonging to the same family in Ginigatena area have been tested positive for COVID-19. Meanwhile, two COVID-19 related deaths were reported in the country yesterday. Director General of Health Services said that the deaths were reported from Panipiti and Colombo to all areas. Steps have been taken to close all schools in Kalamun Educational Zone from tomorrow for a period of one week. Four Grammar Ladahari divisions in Chilong coastal area have been isolated. Putlam District Director of Health Services Dr. Dinusha Fernando said that areas have been isolated after detecting a development of COVID-19 patients in the identified areas. So far, 13 police officers in divisions in Colombo District have been isolated. Vanathamulla area in Borala Police Division and Vekanta Grammar Ladahari Division in Slave Island have been further isolated. Five police divisions in Gampaha District and two Grammar Ladahari Divisions in Alavatuguda Police Divisions in Kandy have been isolated. Nine Grammar the Hari divisions in Bandaragama Police Division have also been isolated. A program to distribute dry rations packages for people affected from COVID-19 outbreak was held at Abhayarama Temple in Nara Hempita. The program was initiated with the presence of Sri Lanka Ambassador to France, Kanishka Hidimuregama. A monitoring mechanism has been planned to ensure that the home quarantining process initiated for the close contacts of the infected patients to control the further spread of COVID-19 outbreak is being conducted efficiently. The mechanism is set to be initiated under the instructions of President Gota Rajapaksa. The monitoring task will be allocated to a committee which consists of field officers. The committee includes officials from economic development, agricultural research and production assistance, some of the development, family health services as well as Gram and Iladari officials, public health inspectors and police officers. The composition and the relevant responsibilities of the monitoring mechanism has been relayed to Ministry and State Ministry Secretaries, Provincial Chief Ex Secretaries, Provincial Health Secretaries, District and Divisional Secretaries through a circular by a Secretary to the President, P.B. Jasundra. Home quarantining process is one of the prioritized features of the measures introduced by the government on the instructions of the health authorities to mitigate the COVID-19 outbreak. Accordingly, persons identified as close contacts of the infected patients have to undergo a quarantine period of 14 days. Each officer attached to the monitoring committee has to visit the quarantining house on each day to monitor the quarantine process. The committee is responsible to ensure that all residents undergoing quarantine are remaining in their respective residences and to probe complaints received from a third party. The committee members are bound to protect privacy and confidentiality of the patients and their close contacts. They should also direct their attention on the cleanliness of the quarantining residents and other patients, handicapped and elderly persons. If a member of the family contract the virus during the quarantine period, the rest of the members of the family must be quarantined for another 14 days. The public health inspector in charge of the area and relevant Gramani Ladari officers should be notified at the beginning of the home quarantine process of each residence. The president has instructed that the ensuring of the home quarantining process is being conducted efficiently is a special responsibility vested with the relevant officials of the committee.
A decision has been reached to bring the recently gazetted Ministry of Technology under the purview of the President. The perspective decision was reached on in order to build a technology-based society envisaged under the Saubhagya Dagma policy statement. Simplification of state machinery and market process expansion of digital governance to the information technology as a tool for knowledge exchange are priorities of the newly established ministry. Establishment of international electronic payment schemes, high-speed data exchange system and associated mobile network across the country are within the purview of the new ministry. All economic sectors including agriculture, industry and services will become technology dependent in the future. The government seeks integrate investment in education with economic sectors to create a society armed with new technology in the 21st century. The president intends to build a culture of technology innovation that will enhance the living standard of the people. A new cabinet minister and a state minister were sworn in before President Gotabi Rajapaksha at the presidential secretary today. Accordingly, Rira Dminar Sarat Virasekar took oaths as the cabinet minister of public security. He held provincial councils and local governing bodies state ministerial portfolio previously. Meanwhile, Minister Chamal Rajapaksha took oaths as the state minister for state security, home affairs and disaster management. The minister was sworn in the state ministerial portfolio again after the state ministry of internal security was amended to state minister Minister of State Security, Minister Chamal Rajapaksha to also Cabinet Ministers for Irrigation. Meanwhile, new Public Security Minister Rear Admiral Sarat Virusekar invoked blessings at Gangarama Temple in Colombo today. The incumbent minister also visited Chief Incumbent of Gangarama Temple, Venerable Dr. Kirinde Asaji Thera. IGPC D. Vikram Ratne was also present at this occasion. State Minister Professor Chan Chai Sumana says that the State Pharmaceutical Manufacturing Corporation expected to produce 12 to 20 new medicinal drugs during next year. He made these remarks while taking part in the inauguration of the latest product of the local pharmaceutical series introduced by the State Pharmaceutical Manufacturing Corporation on a monthly basis. Several products have already been introduced under the theme New Medicine for the New Country. The new medicinal drug hydroxychloroquine sulfate was launched yesterday. Chairman of the State Pharmaceutical Manufacturing Corporation, Dr. Utpala Indravansha, symbolically presented the medicinal drug to State Minister Professor Chandra Chazumana. Subsequently, the State Minister handed it over to Dr. Ananda Vijay Vikrama. And Trinkamali's Chief Magistrate's Court, Additional Magistrate Court, and Chavakachuri Magistrate Court have issued interim injunction order preventing the conduction of Mahaveru commemorations in northeastern areas. Police and media spokesman DIG Ajit Rohan said that police stations in northeastern areas have been informed to take steps in legal action against those who violate the court orders. Rastakriyavale dicche, rastavadin samari mata avastava labindi nahe. Iveni yam kate yutta ke deno na. Ya adhikarna niyoge kata patahani wa kate yutta kirima wagema. Merate chaati inna tara samagiya ekamutu baave nethi kirima ta garna utsahaya. Iveni ayate erhiva chaat jayi. And companies completing the concessional loan schemes proposed by the government in the budget 2021, the Monetary Board of the Central Bank has decided to introduce a maximum interest rate on mortgage-backed housing loans obtained by salaried employees from licensed banks. Accordingly, licensed banks will be made to charge only 7% per annum for such loans, at least for the five year of the loan's tenure. This was revealed at a loan line press conference held this morning. At the meeting of the monetary board that was held yesterday, the board reviewed the monetary policy stance of the central bank with a lengthy discussion on Sri Lanka's macroeconomic situation and prospects. The board noted the proposals of the budget 2021 that was presented last week to revive the economy to a novel approach. The approach in the budget is one of promoting economic growth in the sense of growth of GDP, while also looking after other requirements of socio-economic development. For example, maintaining social justice and maintaining environmental sustainability. This holistic concept of development would include objectives like 
reasonably full employment, poverty alleviation, and fair relative distribution socially and regionally. All this requires a robust market economy with collaborative public and private sectors. From the public sector side, this policy approach needs public investment involving both government capital expenditure and investments by state-owned enterprises. The government is then providing a wide range of incentives and the required infrastructural facilities to promote private domestic investment as well as overseas investments, particularly foreign direct investments, FDIs. In all these activity areas, the government spends a lot of resources as well as foregoes uh, its potential revenue providing fiscal incentives. In addition, government requires resources to address issues of full employment, poverty alleviation, regional development, environmental sustainability, etc. What I am coming on to is the need to joint work and collaboration between fiscal and monetary policy authorities. This becomes ever so important and indispensable during a time like this, battered as we are by this unprecedented pandemic, which spreads its uh, devastation in stages. We were coming out of its adverse influence strongly during June to October this year, when the pandemic struck us again. During a time like this particularly, and in the type of development model we pursue generally, the government and the central bank ought to work hand in hand, and indeed we are doing that right now. The decision at the monetary board meeting yesterday was to yeah. maintain the current uh, yeah. interest yeah. rates unchanged at uh, yeah. uh, the levels observed yeah. now. Yeah. The additional yeah. decisions that were made yesterday was to introduce a maximum interest rate applicable on mortgage-backed housing loans obtained by salaried employees at 7%. And at the same time, the monetary board also emphasized the need well, for okay. ending targets yeah. for significant yeah. sectors. In addition, the central bank introduced 18% maximum interest rate on credit cards, 16% maximum interest rate on uh, prearranged temporary overdrafts, 10% maximum interest rate on uh, facilities, and also an, a, a penal interest rate cap of two percentage points over the regular interest rate interest rates to be charged uh, on mortgage-backed housing loans for salaried employees and uh, after five years this rate is expected to be linked to average weighted prime lending rate plus one percentage point and meanwhile the committee appointed by prime minister mahindra rajapaksha to probe into the irregularities occurred in the state banks during the yahapalna government period will commence a recording of evidence tomorrow the committee has informed that several high officials attached to loan departments of mainstream state banks have been summoned to record statements the recording of evidence will be carried out at the offices designated for the committee at the BMICH premises. So far, more than 200 complaints have been lodged with the committee. The four-member committee has been appointed to study the alleged irregularities taken place in four mainstream state banks since January 8, 2015. The committee expected to present recommendations on the legal, financial and administrative steps to be taken to avoid such irregularities to occur in future. The committee has been established with the aim to further strengthen the national economy by improving the state banking system into a more public-friendly service. The cabinet paper to establish the committee was presented by the Prime Minister under his capacity as the Minister of Finance. Former High Court Judge Shisira Ratnayaka has been appointed as the Chairman of the committee, while Chartered Accountant Susanta De Silva and retired additional Auditor General Premananda have been named as members of the committee. And with that, we conclude tonight's news. Do it just tomorrow at the very same time. Stay safe. Good night. Good night.